read, you teach me to write, you teach me me book. Man, teacher. You teach me to wash, you teach me to sew, you teach me to cook. Man, teacher. You teach me to press, you teach me to pay. Just about 13 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock on this Monday morning, welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, President of the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association, Tutor Ant Antonio, Antonio actually, De Freitas, has maintained the union's call for teachers to stay home today, Monday, the first day of the new school term, and to reflect on the state's treatment of the profession. Joining us, of course, to talk more about this is the president herself, Ms. Antonia De Freitas. Ms. De Freitas, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Now. Good morning, Kimberly. Thank you for having me. Good morning to your viewers. Of course. Now, I want to first address the issue of the day of rest and reflect. Just tell us exactly why you would have called on teachers to use the first day back out of school um, as a time to reflect um, as a teacher. Just some historical background very quickly. In 2015, tutors submitted to the chief personnel officer their proposals for the collective bargaining period 2014 to 2017. And that is actually the period for which we are negotiating now. So you see that timeline immediately from 2015 to now. There have been a number of delays on the part of the, um, from the office of the chief personnel office or the CPO in terms of meeting with the association. Eventually, however, in 2020, five years later, the office of the CPO agreed to have the engagement to do the market survey and that was completed and discussion started in 2021. So at the end of the day, we've recognized that one, there was, well, we don't know if it's deliberate or not, what could have been very much coincidental, but definitely before COVID, there were delays in engagement with the union in terms of salary negotiations. What we've recognized since then, Kimberly, and the listeners and the viewers, is that whereas there was prior agreement between the state and the union to have the negotiations conducted in a particular way using a particular methodology we would call it the market survey approach the state at this time has unilaterally imposed that same four percent offer towards what it is offering to education professionals we have to remember that there is a, a relationship between education professionals any worker and the employer in this case the cpo that is the provision of services when we are providing a service, we expect to be compensated for that service. When we're providing goods, we expect to be able to pay for the goods. Our education professionals have provided yeoman service over the last three years, especially, and under some very trying circumstances. And then to come now and have an imposition, which is a breach of an agreement, one, in terms of negotiation process, and then two, the offer that equates to, in some instances, $200 before tax, or in some instances, $190 before tax, $150 before tax, over a six-year period, because that offer is broken down to 002 for 2014 to 2017, and then 002 for 2017 to 2020. That also means that within that, our retirees would get nothing, little to nothing persons who retired during that period. So we recognize that, listen, if we want to send a message and make a statement that the society and the state have to value what we do as educators, we have to withhold our services at some point in time. That because That is because the employer is not upholding his end of that employee-employer relationship. But Mr. Freitas... This is the first day yeah, you, this is right, the first but, day of, of engagement for the yeah. students. It's not the first day out for teachers. But we would want to claim that there's going to be significant learning loss today. On the first day of school, when we are having students orient to school, et cetera, et cetera, certain ground rules, et cetera, et cetera. Why are we considering that this is a day of significant loss? There are so many students that the teachers, the administrators have reached out to over the last three years to mitigate the learning loss in so many ways. Even before the state did that in March of 2020, there were educators reaching out to students to have them engaged. So it is unfair to say that because we are taking one day of action at this time, 
that we are disengaging our services to send a message that we are being wicked and mean and unfair and punishing parents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is about the employer-employee relationship Ms. that Freitas? has been broken. And yes, are Ms. you hearing Freitas? me? That Hi, yes. Broken. So I know that a lot of parents would be asking. I know that a lot of parents mm -hmm. will be asking about the day-to-day the -day because, of course, they're thinking that this is the first day back out of school. And yes, you did mention the learning loss and the fact that it may not necessarily be a learning loss because they are only taking one day, but also looking at the fact that uh, some of the teachers would have also come out of a vacation period and now the students are going back out for the first day, how this is actually going to be affecting them. Because remember, when the students go out of school, parents can now go back out to work. They wouldn't have to think about, you know, having babysitters and that sort of thing. So why today, oh, as opposed oh, to sometime so over the July, point, August Kimberly. vacation? You're making a point, Kimberly, that I just had an engagement with in another media house. Please and you're tell using me, the exact term. Yes. You're using the exact term. When the children come back out of school, parents will have to study or think about babysitters, etc. And there was a very robust discussion about whether teachers should make a claim that they are not babysitters, because that is exactly how some persons view the scenario. You are, are you sending your child therefore to school for education or for the child to be in a safe space? Um, because you as the caregiver, as a guardian, have something else to do, be it work or otherwise. And right. that's one of the problems with our education system. We are not valuing that, listen, our sector deals with clients of a particular nature and it's multifaceted. It's not just about coming to deliver a curriculum. I am a parent too. So when you tell me that every evening for the week, you can't come to pick up your child before six for whatever reason, not necessarily transportation or traffic issues, and that I have to wait there. What happens to my child? When you tell me that I have sacrificed during this last vacation here with no rest to deal and to assist with and to assist children who, as we said, have had the learning loss, have been negatively impacted, and who in my own school We've taken a decision to assist those children, separate and apart from what the Ministry of Education is doing. When you tell me that as an educator, I still have to dip into my pocket to purchase school supplies, to refurbish my classroom, to make sure that the children have meals on this first day when you will not have school feeding, to make sure that some children who don't have money to come to school because the PTSC service has not been engaged can come to school from whenever and you tell me these things and we talk about it being unfair where is the unfairness when as educators we do all of these things every single day consistently and right. still we are not appreciated and recognized so the issue of, of of i would want to take offense and i'm sure educators would take offense to that because on the one hand you have some person saying we can't make the statement that we are babysitters but on the other hand there is that sector that says ah school is open i can deposit the children here now and go about my business and we coach it and we frame it under learning loss and whatever else again and that's not the case i'll tell you something kimberly you mentioned it or you alluded to it in your introduction to this the particular interview there are roughly 630 schools primary and secondary schools in trinidad and tobago not counting the ecce right. centers right um, and every year, for however many years, even prior to COVID, principals have indicated these are the major repairs that need to be done at my school, A, B, C, D, or E. There are some repairs that do require the intervention at the level of the Ministry of Education. At present, we have over 350 requests from principals of different schools, not all schools. Some schools have multiple requests for major repairs. Only two weeks ago, the Ministry of Finance released funding for the Ministry of Education to offer tenders to contractors to come in to do repairs for only 80 of those schools. Right. Look at the difference in the number. Now, with all of that, there is still the insistence by the ministry that all schools must be open today. So you are willing to send the children, to have the children come out to an environment that could be hazardous because either the work has not begun or the work is now on the way, 
You're willing to have the children come out of that environment where it is hazardous to them. But you're not understanding when we say, listen, this is not the way to deal with education issues. Well, we Ms. have to Ms. De Freitas, I, I, because I, I know we have to move quickly along. So you're talking about the, the, the wage negotiations in terms of the 4%. You're talking about the fact that schools may still need to be repaired, although schools are opening today. And I'm wondering, what is the rest and reflect? What exactly are you hoping to achieve? And what sort of numbers or what, 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 what sort of um, solidarity are you expecting from teachers? Do you think that teachers are actually going to stay home today on the first day that the new school term is opening? Well, I'll tell you something. The president of tutor doesn't wake up one morning after having a dream and say we're going to do rest and reflect. This is the voice of the teachers. This is a decision taken by the general council of tutor, the position of members, that they are ready. Enough is enough. As I said in a, a few minutes earlier, that employer-employee relationship has been breached for far too long, and we believe that to take a stand, we need to withhold our services. And sometimes you do it at a time when it's most crucial, when it can get the most impact. Reminder of the day of total policing some years ago when our pol fellow police officers, comrades in arms, took action, did their job, did what they were supposed to do, but we found so many negative things to say because they too at that time said, enough is enough. There are different ways to send messages and make statements that the employee-employer relationship needs to be enhanced. And I would hasten to add, however, that even though Tutor is saying that we reject this offer, we have still indicated to the CPO we are willing to continue engaging in discussions for a revised and improved offer that will reflect the value of teachers and the fact that we contribute significantly to national development. Ms. De Freitas, what do, you, what do you think is going to be a comfortable figure or a percentage that the, that the teachers will want to accept? Because I know, for example, the amalgamated workers, they took the 4%, but there have also been conversations about a 19%. The Minister of Finance is saying that that is too much for the government to pay right now. So what is the teacher or tutor going to be comfortable accepting? Tutor does not utilize the percentage of, um, increase of push, and that's the first point I made in terms of the breach of trust and the poor bargaining, the breach in collective bargaining approach. We utilize the market survey approach. So very quickly, Kimberly, you as a journalist will have certain qualification and skill requirements for you to fit your job. Right. An educator in a particular category may have similar qualifications and skill requirements. However, when we look at what that open market said and we compare jobs of similar competencies and qualifications, we recognize that your job and what you do, you may receive $200 and the educator for the same qualifications and competencies may receive $50. That's right. the market survey in, in a nutshell. What tutor is asking for is not so that gap that exists at $150 is the gap that exists between the teacher, the educator, and the job in the comparator um, environment. Tutor is not asking for that closure of the gap by 100%. So in other words, in this instance, using this example, we're not asking for $150. We are asking for a portion of that, a percentage of the closure of that gap so that we are saying that it's not fair to use the percentage approach when what we have been doing is a whole different methodology. And therefore, when the CPO imposes that percentage and breaches our agreed to methodology, it comes down to the figure I gave you, that $200, that $190, that 150 as the case may be, before tax. But right. that is not what Tito is asking for. We are asking for a percentage of the closure of the gap between our jobs and the comparator jobs in the open market. And, and Mr. So Freitas, even that quickly. Has to be paired up. Of course. And Mr. Freitas, quickly. If you have the rest and uh, reflect today and the teachers do come out and they do support it, um, but the government is not so accepting of what happened and they don't exactly take the call as serious. Are we going to be seeing more of these days of rest and reflect coming up in the school term? The members on the general council will decide that that's not for me to pronounce. I can't make that decision on my own. As I said, I said for the, the members on the general council to determine. Okay. And Ms. Freitas, closing thoughts um, as we move into this new school term? 
there is much that we have to consider. We are still working as educators. We are working on salaries that we have to struggle with, but we are committed. We are willing to engage the stakeholders in terms of ensuring the best welfare of our students going forward. All educators know what they have to do and how to do their jobs. And at the end of the day, this is about ensuring that we have quality public education for all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago towards national development. Nice. Mr. Freitas, thank you so much for joining us. As always, I know we're going to have you back in soon, of course, as things continue, especially with those wage negotiations. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Please stay safe, everyone. Of course. And that was the president of TUTA, Ms. Tika, um, Antonia Tika de Freitas. She's sharing a little bit about the rest and uh, reflection that she's calling on our teachers to actually come out and actually stay home <laughs> and support <laughs> as they focus on their wage negotiations. Now, up next, we do have uh, the Youth Awards. Rockers is going to be talking to a representative about those Youth Awards that's coming up for this year.